All right. It is the inaugural episode of the Sports with the Z and a T podcast uh, brought to you by Godzilla Media. First off, I want to thank Gaz for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Bryce Zielinski. I will be the host of Sports with a Z and T. And alongside me is my co-host, Taylor Lattimore. Uh, Taylor, say hi to everybody for all the viewers. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Happy to be here. Excited. So, so yeah, I mean, we, we've worked in the past together through former employers and we, we have worked under Gaz before and Gaz oper- gave us this opportunity, which we're both really excited about. I, I think really what we're going to bring to the table here is more of a generalized uh, form of sports talk. Obviously, a lot of the people coming to this podcast was from my made for Philly audience where it's all Philly sports. That's not what this is going to be, but I appreciate you being here. Um, If I have Taylor talk about Philly sports for 45 minutes, I think he'll want to kill me afterwards. So we're not going to do that. Um, But no, I already want to kill you. (laughs) I know you do, but I like Carson Wentz and you like Carson Wentz. So we have a mutual agreement right off the rip. We do have that in common. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I, I mean, I appreciate my made for Philly audience coming. We are centered out of Albany, New York, the capital region. Uh, we are brought to you by Saving Face Barbershop. Uh, my boy, Jeremiah up in Saratoga Springs. Um, definitely. If you're in this area, go give him a look. If you need a fresh cut, I have a fresh cut right now. I'm actually due in two weeks to go back up there. Really cool dude, really awesome atmosphere, and especially with times like this right now when it's so hard, um, support your local businesses. And Jeremiah, he's he's about a year and a half old now uh, up in Saratoga, and it's 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 really booming up there. So I know Taylor goes there sometimes as well. So just want to throw that out there. I need to. I'm getting long. Uh, I know, man. I mean, well, it, it's not like last year where I, I I saw pictures from last year where. Oof. I well, you couldn't go get your hair cut, and, no, and I no. had I was sleeking it back. I was like putting it back. I was like growing like a mullet. It, it was terrible. It, I it got was- so desperate. I had my roommate actually cut my hair because I was like, I need something. I need a little bit off. It, it was buzz bad. cut. Buzz cut was on the table. I I, I was yeah, willing to true. buzz it off, and then I, I just didn't do it. I, I I was starting to wear baseball caps. Um, we are going to be. Uh, Our audio is going on YouTube TV. You can also hear us on Spotify as well. Um, And Gaz is going to be putting us on a whole bunch of other platforms. I believe Apple um, podcast is going to be uh, another outlet. And he's got a whole bunch of things down the line. So really excited to grow with Godzilla Media, really start to get this thing going. And bear with us. This is the first episode. There's going to be a lot more (laughs) tweaks as we we get used to this platform. We're using StreamYard. Um, First time I've, I've really used this for my Made for Philly crew again. We do use this, but I'm I'm not the admin to that. So uh, starting to get used to it, but really excited to be moving on <clears throat> with with guys here and, and Taylor. I, I guess for the general public, you know, you know, our sports fans joining us, this is the final week of the NBA season, uh, and, and that's kind of hard to believe, e- even though it was a condensed season. It, it almost feels like the Lakers just won the championship over your Miami Heat just a few months yeah, ago. Yeah. What but <laughs> we'll be back. We'll be back. But but this is the final week of the NBA season, and it, it's been full of a lot of surprises. I, I think a lot of people are surprised with how the standings have shaked out, especially some of the injuries that happened throughout the year. You, you look at the standings right now; it almost looks like my Philadelphia 76ers will hold the top seed in the Eastern Conference, and, and then in the Western Conference, it's starting to look like it's going to shake out that the Jazz will hold the top seed. I I didn't have that on my bingo card to start the year. I'll tell you that with the Suns as the two seed out in the West. Um, so as yeah. we look towards the final week of the NBA, I, I guess I'll start with this. What has been your biggest surprise really what, as we look towards the playoffs? What was your biggest surprise for this season? I think overall my, my biggest surprise either side, East and West, uh, if I'm looking at one team, I think it's the New York Knicks. I yeah. did not expect the New York Knicks to be sitting at the four seed uh, right now, heading towards the end, uh, heading towards the playoffs. Um, they have a big game against uh, the Lakers coming up, and they can spoil, you know, spoil the Lakers, have them stay in the the play-in tournament. But I think just Tom Thibodeau has done an excellent job, and he is, I think, the favorite 
probably for the coach of the year. Cause I mean, took it right out of my mouth. Look what Tom Thibodeau has done with the team that I I remember you and I had been on air before in the past to start the NBA season. We were on a show together and Mm -hmm. we were talking about the Knicks being one of the worst teams in the Eastern conference, looking towards the lottery, but we said they might have enough that they're not going to get a good lottery pick. And here they are Tom Thibodeau. First of all, Julius Randall, uh, he's not going to win MVP, nor in my opinion, should he win the MVP? No, but he definitely deserves him to be in that conversation, leading the team oh. in points, averaging 20. He's Taylor, he's averaging a double double. He's yeah. averaging 24 points and, and 10 boards along with six assists to start. the. So what the Knicks have done with really not that stud all-star has been really impressive to watch. And yeah, they're the I mean, four seed. It's like Julius Randle is the best player, obviously. And then who's the next best player? It's like it's it's hard to really say because they're just playing really good. I think Tim Tom Thibodeau team uh, defense, and they're just making it work. And obviously, we thought they were going to be one of the worst teams in the East, maybe in the whole NBA. I mean, they've been a laughing stock for you know God knows how long. Um, and so to see them rise to fourth place, if you're a Knicks fan, you've got to be just over the moon, Even whatever happens in the playoffs. Well, I, I think I, I think where it really started to kick off for the Knicks this year is the growth of R.J. Barrett, because R.J. Barrett did not really look good last year. People were already saying it was a bust, uh, but this kid, he, he's averaging 35 minutes a night. He's a key piece of what they do alongside Randall at the shooting guard position. And averaging near 18 points a night. I mean, he is a solid contributor. You brought in the veteran Derek Rose, who is a Tom Thibodeau favorite. He's followed Tom Thibodeau all yep. over the NBA, whether it be Chicago, Minnesota, even here in New York. Uh, <clears throat> and really, they're just playing team ball. Emmanuel quickly, I think, has been a nice surprise for them as well. He He's contributing about 20 points a night. Reggie Bullock off, off the bench. Alfred Payton off the bench. You have Mitchell Robinson, who... Has been good in spurts, but you know he's been on and off with injuries this year, so not a not a whole lot there out of the center position. But when you've been getting the production out of Julius Randle, I, I agree the Knicks have been a pleasant surprise. For me, another surprise, the complete opposite direction has been the Boston Celtics. <laughs> I, I, they were dealt with them. They were they were dealt with a massive blow earlier in the week. Jalen Brown is out with a torn ligament in his right hand. He's out for the rest of the year. Um, right now they're sitting in the seventh spot, which is good for the play in tournament, which is kind of scary. If you're sitting there as a Celtics fan, thinking you're going to be a top four team in the Eastern conference. And all of a sudden you could be one game away, one bad game away against triple, <laughs> triple double King Russell Westbrook and the Washington wizards away from not even seeing the real playoffs. I mean, that's a strong possibility. So, I, I mean, look, because if look, if the Celtics lose to the Wizards, they're done. One game. Boom, you're done, and the Wizards move on. So, the Celtics, I have never seen a team with two All-Stars in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Another should be All-Star uh, with, with uh, well, I, I shouldn't say should be all star. He ha- he has been a, a typical all star. Is um, shoot, I just lost his name. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. Beal? No, talk about Beal. No, 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 Kemba. I'm sorry, Kemba. Oh, oh, um, oh, oh, oh. I, I don't What's know that? why I, I I lost his name, <laughs> but it, it's been a long day. Um, but <laughs> the trio of Kemba. And Tatum and Brown should have produced more than the seventh seed in the NBA playoffs. And I think Brad Stevens, I'm surprised he hasn't been fired. He turned down the Indiana job because I think he wants to stay in the NBA. But this is a Celtics team that has to look at self in the mirror and decide, are you going to move on with Tatum and Brown? Are they the two that are going to be the, 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 duo that you're going to be moving forward with, or are you going to try to trade and restart? Because when LeBron left the Easter conference to go to LA, everybody looked towards Boston as that team to beat. Philly was there. Yes. Milwaukee with Giannis was there. Yes. 
Brooklyn came this year, but Boston has always been that team that people looked at and figured, hey, th- this team could do some damage and get to an NBA Finals. Yeah, uh, I at, right now the Celtics are the seventh seed, so they'd play the Hornets in the play-in tournament. But I mean, they don't have Brown now, so they could definitely fall down um, where they're facing, like the Wizards or the Pacers. Um, and uh, when I look at this Boston team, I don't think it's time to to blow up the that trio. I, I think it's it's time to look at Brad Stevens. I mean, mm-hmm. he's he. If you look at the overall resume, yes, they they pushed LeBron um, and the the Cleveland in the. Eastern Conference Finals that one year, um, and but they never were able to get over the hump. And you can't get rid of you're not getting rid of Tatum. Like let's be honest, of the three of them, I think the one you might get rid of is Kemba. Um, I don't know who you'd get rid of him for. I don't know if there's a better player out there because Kemba's great. But well, I think it, the biggest hole with the Celtics, and and I think any Celtics fan out there would would agree with this, is really they they lack the big man. And yep. they've always been in conversations. They were always in conversations for Andre Drummond. They were always in the conversations. Maybe Carl Anthony Towns will go there. And they've just never pulled the trigger. That's something they to keep to an get eye AD on. As well. They tried to get AD. That's something I'd keep an eye on this year. If, if the Celtics go a- and make a move for Carl Anthony Towns out in Minnesota this year, as Minnesota looks to completely rebuild again, because they never really built. They just keep being terrible and terrible but (laughs) i mean if they want to be collecting assets and carl anthony towns clearly isn't in their future as it comes to trying to contend boston should make a strong move for cat and i think that would be i don't think they're gonna ask for cat i think they're gonna ask for tatum in that deal or jalen brown so as Mm -hmm. a celtics fan or or if if i'm the celtics front office you have to decide is giving up jalen brown because I don't think it'll be Tatum, but keep no. so building around a core of Tatum, Cat, and Kemba, would that be better moving forward and, and build on your depth? I think that's something they'd have to consider. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I think that that'd be that'd be a fun pairing. I mean, I I can't, I can't tell you how it would go because Cat has been such a kind of up and down player to where you you really don't know what you're getting, uh, like day in and day out. Um, at least that's been his, his, he's been very much maligned as a guy who's, who doesn't really work as hard, you know, going back to Jimmy Butler and the whole Minnesota fiasco that happened back, back in the day. Um, but at this point you need to change something. And I don't know if it's going to be changing Brad Stevens or, or getting rid of Brown, but obviously I, I agree with you that Tatum is not the, like, you're going to keep Tatum, Tatum. Tatum scored 60 points this season and yes, he did. And that was that unreal since Larry bird. Yeah. And so like that, you're not getting rid of Tatum, maybe Walker and you could part with Brown, but only for a guy like uh, a cat, someone who's like a, a perennial, like all-star type player. Let's head to the West because there, I think there's a whole lot more to talk about in the Western conference right now, because the East is kind of, it's going to be the Celtics, Bucks, or Nets. That that's just what it's going to be. Hey, 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 hey. The Heat. It's not. Might. It's not going to be the Heat. They might. It's not going to be the they Heat. Might. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> yeah, but All you right. said that last year, and what happened? They proved me wrong. But they were also exactly, at, exactly. Oh, it was the bubble. It was the bubble. Whatever. Yeah, it was. <laughs> All right. But the West, you could be looking at a Lakers. And my dog makes his person first, uh, first introduction of my dog. There it is. There it is for, for, for the people that are listening to Spotify or, you know, <laughs> any of our other podcast outlets, this is going to happen and I can't control it because we're recording in a COVID era, uh, in my apartment. So it's going to happen. Um, Otis, the pug will make his introduction, but, but Hey, that that's what makes this podcast this podcast. Uh, but we're looking at a pot. Let, let's look at the Western Conference. You're looking at a possible Lakers Warriors play in matchup right now. Ooh. Do you have? I, I mean, you want to talk about one pressure, two, uh, something that I would expect the Western Conference Finals to be. 
not yeah. a play-in game. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, the Warriors are obviously not at full strength. It's just basically Steph Curry running around, chucking up shots that are almost all going down. Um, so you you give uh, Steph all the credit in the world for playing this season, and people were doubting him. People were thinking, oh, he can't do it. He can't carry a team. Well, he has, and he is. And so it, it, it'll be a great, great matchup. You want everyone to be healthy. Obviously, LeBron and AD, you want them to come back and uh, be ready for this game. And if they are, I, I think it'll be a good game. Uh, but I think ultimately, like, the Lakers would take it. But, man, would Steph Curry put on a show there. I mean, if he could win, if he could somehow beat the Lakers in the play-in tournament and get in, that would be that would be just ridiculous. Let's talk about the Lakers because, obviously, I, I think anybody, you know, with, with half a brain would pick the Lakers to beat the Warriors. That's just that the Lakers are a lot of people's Western Conference pick to go to the finals. Mm-hmm. Is this a team – Assuming LeBron is back and healthy, assuming AD continues to play at the level that he's playing. Now, obviously, the Lakers' decline had a lot to do with LeBron hasn't been in the lineup. AD has been out of the lineup as well. They're not fully healthy. Schroeder's going to be out. Hopefully, he's back by the playoffs. Um, But is this a team that you can confidently say yeah, they're still my Western Conference final pick because you have the Utah Jazz who, look, they're not a sexy pick, but they've been the best team in the NBA for months. They're 50 and 19. They're, I mean, you have Donovan Mitchell playing at an MVP level himself. And then you have the Phoenix Suns who came out of nowhere. I mean, do I think the Suns what, come playoff time are going to knock off the Lakers? No, but they're, <laughs> they're 48 and 20. And then you still have the Clippers with Kawhi and Paul George. And then, oh, by the way, you have the Nuggets with an MVP candidate and Joker. So this is a deep Western Conference, and if the Lakers aren't playing at their best, I can't confidently say they're going to make it to the NBA Finals. Yeah, I I saw a tweet um, a couple, uh, like a week or so back, uh, where someone was saying he felt like this this whole NBA season just felt like 62 games... uh (laughs) Otis the pug there for, for his, anybody his debut. For, for anybody that's watching our audio I, I <laughs> everybody has to see Otis um if you're listening on Spotify uh next time go on YouTube TV so you can see the menace behind the details he's cute you should definitely go check him out I mean I'll, I'll give him that <laughs> <laughs> uh, but hey, anyway just to calm him down he might have to sit in my lap all, all show <laughs> but uh, get, getting back to it um yeah, I I think so. The tweet said uh, that the sixty two regular game regular season kind of felt like sixty two games of preseason, and I, I'm afraid that the NBA is kind of evolving into that. Yeah, there, there's the the regular season is fun, but when it gets down to it, when you get down to the nitty gritty, if LeBron and AD are both healthy, I don't see any team beating the Lakers, and I. I give all the credit for the Jazz and the Suns making it to where they made it, but I just think we've seen this m- multiple years where like a, the Jazz get a high seed or or some surging team gets a high seed and then they just they can't they they flop because they don't have say the star power the the LeBrons the ads the guys who can really take over games and just win series. LeBron's done this so many times. Uh, like especially with like his ankle like one or two more games and then he'll be back but if this was the playoffs he would be playing he would be playing and he'd probably be dominating i think at this point it's more precaution than anything else that he's sitting out yeah um and so yeah i'm picking against the lakers in any situation i mean there's like the clippers they have like Kawhi and paul george maybe they can put it together um but the jazz i'm sorry i just don't trust them in the playoffs it, it is hard. It, it is hard to not go uh, with LeBron when it comes to seeing him in the finals because you just know that he's going to find a way to do it. Um, when I when I look at a team outside, because I'll, I'll take the field just 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 because because I can. I I still like what the Clippers bring to the table. I I I know they haven't been playing their best basketball. 
but I think when it comes to the playoffs, we've seen what Kawhi could do in the playoffs. And I think with Paul George, along with Zubac at center, uh, Landry Shamit ha- has become a nice piece this year. I still like the Clippers to possibly come out of the West as well. I'm going to, I'm going to say this. It's going to be a Sixers Clippers finals. The doc rivers gets revenge on his, uh, former wow. NBA team. Mm-hmm. Bold. Is that like your official prediction? Uh, it might, it might have to be, we, we still got time to figure that out. I, I think next week we're going to, we'll, we'll do a bracket. We'll do an NBA mm-hmm. playoffs bracket once, once everything's established. But, uh, but yeah, my, my early NBA finals prediction Clippers, uh, Sixers, because, I, first of all, I, I think this what the Sixers have done this year, and and I'm I'm not going to bring my bias as much into this show. Obviously, there's going to be a whole lot of bias if you listen to Made for Philly. That's all Philly sports podcast. But I'll try to be as straight with our listeners as possible on this it's episode. Gonna th- it's going to leak through. I'll, I'll be honest. Like even <laughs> well, if, even my heat bias is going to leak through. Uh, every of, now of, and course, again. of course, of course. But uh, <clears throat> I, I just think with the system that doc rivers brought the ability to bring shooters in to cater to what Embiid always did well, which is absolutely dominate the paint and become the best center in all of basketball. And my favorite to win the MVP. What Ben (laughs) Simmons does is distribute the ball, play phenomenal defense, attack the rim. And he's good at everything except a jumper, but he's good at everything else to bring Mm -hmm. in Seth Curry and Danny green. I just think has been what exactly what those two all-stars needed and and alongside Tobias Harris, who has played his best, his best basketball going into the season under doc rivers out in LA. So I really loved what Tobias Harris. I I thought Tobias Harris was going to be a breakout player this year, not really a breakout because he does have a max contract. He's been there, done that, but he played at an all-star level this year. And a lot of people were upset that he didn't make the all-star roster. Doc Rivers knows how to use them. The bench is better with Furka and Korkmaz and, and Matisse Teibel, even Tyrese Maxey, the, the rookie that they got out of Kentucky. This is a deep team, and, and I think the chemistry that the Sixers have built I think is going to be important when you look at what the Easter Conference is. The Bucks are scary, but I don't believe that they have anything that really puts them over the top of what they've been in the years past. I like Drew Holiday a lot. But I just don't think they have that next level be- bench player or, or that added piece. I, I just don't like what the Bucks are when it comes to an NBA title contender. And then obviously the conversation goes with the Nets. If Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant played more than six games together this year and Harden's hamstring isn't hanging on by a thread, maybe I'd reconsider who my pick was in the Eastern Conference. But you cannot tell me that they're going to be healthy enough and have enough chemistry to beat a team that's simply been dominating the Eastern Conference all season. You can't tell me that the Nets are going to do it. And the fact that they're the three seed, there's a strong chance that they're going to be stuck playing the Heat in the first, either the two or the three seed. Right now, as of broadcast, I'm sorry, they're the two seed. But you're talking, they might have to play Boston, yes. They they'd have to play Boston, Milwaukee, like Boston, Miami, Milwaukee, or or something along those lines. Uh, no, it wouldn't be mm-hmm. that many. They well, they'd have to play Philly in the third round after playing two very tough series. I just don't. I'm sorry, they're going to be worn down to the point that by the time they come and see the Sixers, they're done. <clears throat> see, I'll play a little devil's advocate for the Nets is they've only played six games together, like you said. So maybe they're looking at it more as, okay, we have two playoff series before we play like the Sixers. If, if they think that the Sixers are the best team in the East, which they are right now, they're number one. Um, so I'll give you that. Um, but yeah, they're going to play. They're going to play whoever wins between right now between the Celtics and the Hornets. I'm sure they're praying for the Hornets because well, I mean, maybe not want the Celtics now since Jalen Brown's out. Um, but they're going to hopefully if they're all healthy, they'd have a, a, a series where they can kind of hone what little chemistry they need. I mean, I also don't think they need a ton of chemistry. <laughs> oh, just making his debut again. Uh, of course. Of course. I'm, I'm going to have to give him like a bone or something to shut him up. 
<laughs> well, uh, he's, but, he's getting mad at you because you're talking you're talking dumb about the Nets. I'm talking dumb. About, okay. No, I'm well, I think that the, the Nets <laughs> the, the Nets would love to have those early series against teams that they probably think they they can beat, so that oh, they can sure. have that chemistry. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know because ke- we almost never seen uh, we've seen big threes before, but something about this big three like they are three offensive juggernauts and the problem that they're going to have is that they can't play defense very well and i don't know how they're going to stop Embiid. i don't know how they're going to stop Giannis if they end up having to play Giannis, which i mean the heat are going to play the bucks first right now and uh they beat them last year so let's see if we can do it again um but i don't know how they stop even bam out of bayou if they're if they ended up playing the heat it, it, they don't have a great interior defender. I mean, they have DeAndre Jordan, but he's going to get run off the court if he has to defend on the perimeter, which he will have to because all these teams have big guys who can shoot. So, well, that's I, just I really it. don't and know. And the Nets, the Nets defensively have been putrid all year no, long. The, the game plan is to outscore people, but that I don't think that works in the playoffs. Doesn't work in the playoffs, especially when you have one of the better defensive teams in the league in. The Sixers, the Heat, are one of the best defensive teams in the in the league. So for for You're them to right they are. for for pot, they just can't score. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, Jimmy can, J- Jimmy can. Look, I I miss Jimmy Butler to death. I I think he he was a huge loss for the Sixers. I oh, love Jimmy I love Butler, Jimmy, but um, I, I just don't see when it comes playoff time the grind that goes through a seven game playoff series and not saying that they're going to ever hit seven games, but the heat are definitely one of those teams that could take you seven that you don't expect it to. You could definitely see a box mm-hmm. net series going seven. You could definitely see a Sixers yep. net, net series going seven. I don't think they have the endurance and the bench. They don't have a bench. And I think that's what really hurts them too. If you bring KD off the floor. You bring Kyrie off the floor. You might get Spencer Dinwiddie back in the playoffs. Congratulations. But I'm sorry. I'm not relying on Blake Griffin coming off the bench and, and showing off in the playoffs. He may look good against, you know, the Hawks or, you know, the, the Hornets for a couple games here and there. Congratulations. He got a dunk finally this year. But no, not in the playoffs. There's Teams are too good to allow that to happen right now. Yeah, uh, the playoffs are a different beast, really, in the NBA. Everything slows down. That's the old adage. Everything slows down, and um, you just make these micro adjustments throughout the the season, and you can really get exposed in certain ways. It's it's what happens to the Bucks every single year as they yep. get to the playoffs, and then they get exposed because. Uh, it just takes one or two adjustments to where, you know, they set up the wall, the Giannis wall, if you will. And, and that's what the heat did last year. And that's what every team does against the bucks. And, uh, Mike Bootenholzer doesn't really make those micro adjustments that you need to make. And when it comes to a team like the heat, they have Eric Smolstra, who's a borderline genius when it comes to making those little adjustments. And so, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know if the Nets can do it, but if there's any three players who could do it, I'd say that James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving are the three you'd want to try, aside it's from def- like LeBron. It's definitely going to be a fun, especially with the play-in tournament. It's going to be fun to talk about this, especially next week, and we will. We will talk plenty more about the NBA moving forward. Um, you know, that... It's going to be interesting to see if any of those Cinderella teams upsets anybody, and and I think the Nets are on watch. I, I if the, I'm telling you right now, if the Nets draw the Heat in the first round, <laughs> watch out. I I mean I know that's music to your ears, Taylor, but I'm telling you, if if the Nets get the right matchup in the first round, you could see them with a quick exit. And, and I know our buddy Eric Hanneman is would not be happy about that. <laughs> no, he, he well, he'd probably just disagree, so it it wouldn't matter. He he wouldn't believe it, but I, they're definitely viable to do that. I mean, any team I think could have a first round exit, except maybe the Sixers. I, I say that because the Nets are. We've just talked about them at length. How we don't really know what they're going to be come playoff time, especially health wise. Oh, well, you and look at the. Hawks I mean, also. You, yeah. You, I mean, you look at the Sixers, and I mean, assuming I, it's 
pretty much nearly impossible that they lose the first seed at this point. They're going to play Indiana or Washington. I mean, come on. That those teams don't even deserve to be in the playoffs. They're nine and ten seats for a reason. The number one seed's not going to lose to them. But um, yeah, that it's going to be exciting to see. I'm really looking forward to the NBA playoffs, especially as a Sixers fan. The process is coming full circle, Taylor. I could feel it. Um, <laughs> put Sam Hinkie in, in Saint Hood now. Uh, I'm just I'm just going to throw it out there. If the Sixers <laughs> win the title, Sam Hinkie needs to be put in Saint Hood. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah i mean trust the process you know hey that's that's, that's all here. that's uh, that's all that's all we that do process. that's all we do have as, as sixers fans you just gotta trust it okay let, let's go to baseball and, and we we're gonna talk about mlb pretenders and contenders we're 35 games into the season but we do actually and i'm gonna use one of these little tickers that Gaz had saved in here we're gonna go to COVID 19 because I just had breaking news and it kind of sucks for my fantasy team, but we'll, we'll get there at, at one point. But um, Ooh, I see that Fernando Tatis, uh, there's stories that there there's and up in New York. We'll talk about the Yankees too, that there's stuff going around, going along with COVID with the Yankees as well. But Fernando Tatis mm-hmm. has been put on the IL and has tested positive for COVID-19. Um mm-hmm. We kind of dodged it for a while, Taylor. I mean, with, with 35 games, we, I mean, the Nationals were a story to start off the year, but we, we had seemed to be turning that corner. It almost seemed like COVID was a afterthought, a past conversation when it came to professional games and, and you know, games being paused or star athletes going on the IL. Baseball's new highest paid player, richest contract in MLB history, Fernando Tatis. <clears throat> out with COVID and as well as Phil Nevin, the third base coach for the Yankees is a coach that tested positive and their, their series is in jeopardy this week as well. So all of a sudden we start a podcast and COVID is back on the forefront in professional sports. Who would have thunk it? I know it's so weird because I feel like last year, obviously it was the talk. Like there was teams getting it left and right. Entire teams, it, it felt like, were just coming down with it, and the entire series is were getting pushed, and it, it was it was terrible last year. And then come this year, and it was kind of died down, and it was we we almost forgot that we were in the middle of a pandemic for a second there, um, at least in the sporting world, because yeah, we were we were kind of getting away from it. But then today, it seems like we. Are, Yesterday, as of recording this, was like you know, it's just coming out. All these, all these different teams getting affected by it, and it's this ugly head again. And and I mean, when it comes to the Yankees, they have a big series we against the Rays. They're... Oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I I cut you off. Keep going. No, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. We, we, I just want to see how they deal with it and whether they can you know hold it under control because if it gets out of control again, that'll be terrible. Yeah, what, what? I mean, the Yankees are starting an important series against the Rays right now. They're trying to turn. <laughs> they're trying to turn the oh, tide. I'll there's go. rumors about it. There's 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 a rumor out there about Trevor Story deal coming out from Buster Olney today. There's a, there's talks about Trevor Story possibly going to the Yankees, which would make a whole Ooh. lot of sense. <clears throat> and when you look at the Padres, they're a team that. All of a sudden, they're standing up. They're staring up at the standings to the San Francisco Giants. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're ahead of the Dodgers right now at, when it comes to recording time. But they're two games out of the team with the best record in the entire National League. Your San Fr- the San Francisco Giants. I didn't have, I didn't see that one coming. But this is this yeah. is just something where you just go get. And I and I we're gonna get away from sports for a second, but go get vaccinated. And I know this is a lot of uh, there's there's a lot of athletes that they're lined up, and, and I get that the Yankees are mostly vaccinated. But I in fact believe Phil Nevin is vaccinated. But the the quicker that everybody gets vaccinated, the least or less I should say likely that things like this are going to happen. And, and the quicker you get to herd imu- immunity, I think I said that right. I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to act immunity. like you one. You got it. You got it. But the quicker we can get to that, the quicker we can be in stadiums, the quicker these athletes can get on the field and stay healthy. 
and the quicker we could get back to normal because we don't want to be talking about headlines like this. I don't want to be talking about Fernando Tatis, one of the brightest young stars in all of baseball, is going to be out for two weeks now because of COVID. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. And and what does baseball have if not these young stars that they need to, you know, start marketing more and getting more casual fans to watch because of these exciting players. And at this point, I mean, a lot of people have their opinions about the vaccine and whether or not they want to take it. But if you don't have those uh those those gripes about it and you're just like, oh, I, I just have never had the opportunity, there's no excuse at this point. I think uh, I, I just saw a little update earlier today that, uh, at least in New York, Uber drivers and Lyft drivers are starting to give people free rides to vaccination centers. And there's vaccination centers all over. Like, you, I, I think I saw another tweet where it was like, you, you don't live, no one lives more than like 10 miles or less from yeah. a vaccination center because yeah. they're everywhere now and so i mean if you're waiting if you're waiting for more availability or to be the one you know letting other people get it first the 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 people who are more at risk or whatever that time has gone everyone should be getting vaccinated now if you're going to get the vaccine do it do it now let's get out of this pandemic well, already god <laughs> what, what what's what's yeah seriously i mean i just want to go I want to be in a baseball stadium again. I want to have a tall boy in my hand and I want to be sitting in the sun, getting sunburnt, watching the <laughs> Phillies win a baseball game. That's all I want. I, I mean, it's just, I, I, I miss it. I haven't been to a sporting event since 2019. The last sporting event that I've been to was the Eagles losing to the Seahawks when Carson Wentz got knocked out with a concussion. I had to watch Josh McCown for three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get that. I need, I need to get that taste out of my head. Um, no. I, but what, what what's really cool what New York's doing when it, when it comes to the vaccines is and and I'm sure a lot of people up here know this by now but if you go to a Yankees or a Mets game now you could get the vaccine going to a Yankees or a Mets game and then when you get the vaccine there they give you a ticket to a future game of your choosing uh yeah. sign me up yeah that that's amazing. I you yeah, I saw you tweeted that and I was like, yeah, that that's that's great. Like if I didn't already have my vaccine, I would go do that. Um kind of sucks that I I can't, you know, I know I, I'm kind of that because I'm, I'm already wishing, vaccinated. I'm kind of wishing I, I I waited. I want a free ticket. Um but but no, <laughs> uh, go but, get vaccinated. It's yeah, just going to be it's just going to be it's going to make life so much easier. We could get back to normal. We can go hang out. We could go high five at sporting events again. And, and I can hug random strangers when the Eagles score a touchdown. That's all I want. That's all I want. Um, all he wants is to hug random strangers. <laughs> that down, write that down. <laughs> that's going to, that's going to be in the, the, the teaser intro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but, but let's talk about, you know, we, we talked about a little bit about the stars missing. Um, we're we're a month in to baseball already, which is kind of hard to believe that it's already been a month. And there have been a lot of surprises, I think, around the majors this year. And I want to go through some of the pretenders and contenders because th there's a lot of teams that are at the bottom that shouldn't be at the bottom. And there's some teams that are at the top that you're looking and saying, there's no way in hell that they're <laughs> staying at the top. And I want to start right where we were just talking about. Let's go right to the National League West. Everybody yeah, all off season. Gonna say that. I, I remember having this comp, Taylor. I remember having this conversation with you on air. Um, I believe it was over the holidays. We And we were talking about the Dodgers, how the Dodgers were going to be by far the best team in baseball. I said, watch out for the Padres because the Padres are going to be making a run for that division. It's not the Padres. No, no, it's not the Dodgers. It's the San Francisco Giants and Gabe. Wait, for me, I mean, it's it's really leaving a bad taste in my mouth because it's Gabe freaking Kapler. The dude can't manage to save his life. The San Francisco <laughs> Giants are twenty-one and fourteen and leading the National League West. Taylor Lattimore, is this a pretender or a contender? I I think they're pretenders. I, I I didn't see this coming. Obviously, we both didn't see this coming, especially not like to for them to be doing well is one thing for them to be leading to division. And like that is just unexpected as like 
to be ahead of the Padres and the Dodgers, I just think no one saw that coming. And it, it, it is coming from kind of veteran guys like, you know, like Buster Posey, like doing his thing. And it, it, it's, it's the way they're of- managing Buster Posey has has helped them tremendously. I mean, you, you look at Buster Posey first. First of all, he's leading the team in batting average. He's batting 385. Mm-hmm. OK, Buster Posey, it's like Buster Posey of old Buster Posey like still exists, back. but he's only played 23 games. They're they're managing. He's he's only he is he has not started more than two consecutive games this season. So so you look at that and you're like, OK, they're managing Buster Posey. You have production from Evan Longoria again. Oh, yeah. He mm-hmm. remember him. He still exists. Uh, he's exactly. having a nice that, bounce back here. Too. Um, Mike Yastrzemski has struggled this year, but he's their, he's their all-star outfielder battling a couple of injuries. I believe he's on the IL now, or just came off it. Um, to be, I, I, I apologize now. I, I don't follow the San Francisco giants like that. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but, but I mean, really who thought that, that you had to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but their pitching is really what has carried them. Um, Kevin, Le- Kevin Gosman, Anthony DeScafani, Logan Webb has been a really nice surprise for them. Uh, Johnny Cueto has been really good. Their bullpen is one of the best in baseball. Um, so, so the, the San Francisco giants are a surprise, but I'm right there with you. Is this going to hold up over 162 games? No, it, it's, it's March. Jesus. It's, it is not March. It is <laughs> May. It, it's May 12th. It, it's, it's not happening. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I just don't see it happening. Uh, I, I still think the Dodgers are going to win that division, and I don't think it's going to be close, even though I do believe the Padres have a shot at surprising a lot of people. But no, I, I'm not going to go a, a, and say the Giants are winning that division. A, another team I wanted to talk about, and and, and we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at this and leave more baseball topics for, ne- for next week. Um, Let's talk about the New York Yankees. But can we go a show without talking about the New York Yankees? No, I don't think so. No. Um, they're sitting at 18 and 16. They're in second. Taylor, they're in second place. They're in hey. second place behind the Red Sox. The Red Sox are leading that division. But I don't know, man. This Yankees team seems broken to me. There, There is something about this Yankees team. And, and, and look, should they win that division? Yes. They should absolutely win that division because it's just simply not that good. And the American League isn't that good. So the Yankees should absolutely be in the playoffs. But outside of Garrett Cole, you've had you've had better stretches out of Tyon and Kluber lately. Jordan Montgomery has been okay pitching-wise. But, I mean, it's the same story each and every day. Yeah, John Carlo's hot right now, but how long is that going to last? You never could get John Carlo and Judge on a hot streak at the same time. Hell, when is Judge going to stop swinging and missing like he can't even hit a baseball? Glaber has been a disaster at short, which is why I threw in that Trevor Story bit. DJ LeMahieu has kind of, eh, he's been okay. I mean, but he hasn't really been what you're used to DJ being. And then you, you kind of have that hole out there in the outfield where you have Clint Frazier playing a little bit. You have Brett Gardner playing a little bit. You have Hicks playing a little bit. But none of them are really proving that they should be in the lineup each and every night. The New York Yankees. Oh, how can I forget? Gary Sanchez has lost a starting catching oh, job. Yeah. Well, this is a Yankees team, him. Taylor. <laughs> This is a Yankees team that I just have no confidence in whatsoever. I, I mean, I picked them. I picked them to go to the, the World Series. I, I felt like if this if there was a year for the Yankees to finally go to the World Series, this year was going to be it because I simply cannot see any American League team outside of the Yankees really having enough to get there. But I'm starting to second guess myself. I mean, I the, see the problem that I run into is it, it seems like every year it's like, oh, this is the year. This is the year the Yankees make it to the World Series. They're going to put it all together. They're going to hit well. They're going to have good pitching. Uh, their their bullpen's going to be good. I mean, their bullpen is good. Um, it's one of their stronger points. Um, it's the starting pitching and then the lack of production uh, on on this hitting, like getting people on base and when they're on base, getting them home, and that's that's their problem. And it's it's frustrating. It, it, you, at least they are pulling, trying to pull themselves out 
of kind of the hole they put themselves in in the beginning of the season. The first couple of weeks was really rough. Um, and then they, they're, they're starting to pull it back up. They're above 500 now, which is good. They're, they're gaining on Boston, but yeah, I, I mean, you don't trust Stanton. You don't trust what he's doing now. He's hot now, but he's one of the streakiest hitters there is, especially on the Yankees. He's never really good. Uh, like he's never really hot. Like you said, when everyone else is hot, when judge is hot, and then they just have the, the strikeout issue where they're just swinging and they're missing. And it's like, guys, you just you just have to put the bat on the ball. You don't have to hit a home run every time. I know that like this well, is that's the what, home run team. This and that's what baseball – you, you put it right on a platter for me because that's what baseball is getting to. I know. Baseball now has it, – it, and I love baseball. I could talk baseball for hours with people, and, and I know you know that. We've done it before. Baseball is getting to a point where it's so damn hard to watch. It is home run or strikeout. And, and that's, I mean, we've had four no-nos already this year, Taylor. We've had mm-hmm. Way Miley, Joe Musgrove, uh, and I'm losing it. John Means, who's on, John Means is on my fantasy team. I was happy about that <laughs> there one. There you go. And, and then was it Gio, was it Giolito? Um, I'm not sure. It was a White Sox pitcher. It might not have been Giolito, but um, we've had four no hitters this year, and it's just been. I, I don't like taking away from the no nos because I, I feel like that's always been such a cool moment. I mean, as a Phillies fan, I grew up, you know, watching the Phillies as a kid and admiring Roy Halladay. Roy Halladay was one of my favorite players. I mean, still is one of my all-time favorite players. I have one of his jerseys. Um, but his perfect game down in Miami and his no-no in <clears throat> in the postseason, that's that's a feeling that doesn't come around often. And I'm and I'm worried that the younger generations now watching baseball aren't going to appreciate what perfect games and no hitters are nowadays because quite simply it's just become so frequent and i think that caters not that pitchers aren't good and that they uh, obviously it still takes a whole lot of skill to throw a perfect game or a no hitter you still need to that, that that takes a lot of effort but to have four already 35 games in that's just and it was carlos rudon that threw the yeah, uh, no gonna, no by yeah. the way um that just seems like a lot. And and I don't want that to be watered down and I don't want it to be not as appreciated anymore because that is still a tremendous feat. No. Yeah, for sure. Uh, no hitters are, they're really cool to watch. Also a fun fact, two of them from this four were against uh, the Cleveland Indians. So were they really? Of, That's yeah, fantastic. two of them. So if that tells you anything about the state of the Cleveland Indians hitting right now, um, but, but yeah, I, I, I personally, um, when it comes to baseball, I truly appreciate a pitcher's battle. I love a low scoring pitcher's duel where it's just, you know, one pitcher is just on his game and he's putting, putting, he's painting the, the strike zone and putting them where he wants and fooling hitters. I love that. But a lot of people don't, especially casual fans, people who, you know, they just want to see high scoring home runs this way, that way. And I think the MLB is kind of leaning into that. They're like, yeah, we we want more offense. We want a faster pace of play. We want all this stuff. And I've even heard talk of let's move the mound back or other stuff like that. And to me, it's like, no, like, no, like, I, I don't like that at all. I like pitchers to pitch the way they're doing. And if your hitters can't hit, then, you know, that's on them. I'm a tradition. I I hate saying I'm a traditionalist. I mean, I'm 26 years old. I'm not a traditionalist. (laughs) Okay. Um, But I'm almost this extra inning rule drives me through a wall. I hate there was something there was just something so cool to me. And and I still I mean, I play MLB the show on the PlayStation five fantastic game for gamers, by the way, if you haven't gotten MLB the show, it is an awesome game to play. Um, but there's just something so cool about like you're in the 16th and 17th inning. Are you going to warm up a starting pitcher? Like 
what mm-hmm. outfielder is going to pitch now? There's just something so cool about it. And, and <laughs> you're not getting that anymore because the game's over in the 10th inning. The longest game this year has been the 13th. It was the Phillies and Braves this past Sunday night. That was the longest game this year. It Listen, as a as a former board op for Yankee games, I'm well, all yeah. for ending. Well, you and I both, my friend. You and I both. I, we have sat there. There was one. There was one game. Rem- remember the World Series game? And I don't know that there was a couple games that went that went to extras in that series. The World Series between the Red Sox and the Dodgers. One of them went to like 17 innings. And now, keep in mind, this was a nationally televised broadcast right so it's a lot longer there's a lot more that goes into that it was a world series game and i we started that game it was like by the time that game started it was like 8 30 it was a saturday night <laughs> by the time <laughs> that disaster by the time post game ended and you got it back to regular programming so you could go home it I was saying hi to the morning traffic people <laughs> oh. and I had gone to bed. It was oh Taylor. It was the worst night of, of my life. Yeah. And, I mean, I'll, but, I'll shout out to uh, Mike James, uh, our other board. Up friend. He's probably, <laughs> he's probably listening to this uh, right now. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to tell him to listen. <laughs> and uh, th- there's one, a war- I think it was a World Series game as well. James fell went- asleep during the games, please. Oh, probably. It went super long, and I, I actually uh, was supposed to work it, uh, but I got him to cover my shift, and he was in for it because uh, that game went to like 13, 14 innings. But- and people don't realize that the post game that comes after, we it's also the worst have to stay part. for that. It's yeah, the we worst have to part. stay for that for another 45 minutes on top yep. of the, the, the actual game. So... <clears throat> I mean, yeah, the, the the new stuff in the, the MLB, I don't I don't like what they're doing. I also didn't like earlier this season when they had that uh that no hitter, but it was in the double header, uh in in the seventh yeah. inning, and they didn't count it as a no hitter. I was like, Madison Bumgarner threw a no hitter because he put the game at seven innings. That that's yeah. I, first of all, double headers. As a kid, I went to a couple of those. There's nothing like having two nine inning games. And spending the, and having a day, seven mm-hmm. innings for double hitters or double headers. Now, are you kidding me? Like, like baseball is getting so. I, I don't know if it's baseball so soft now that it it just hurts. <laughs> it hurts to watch. But I, I mean, look, I get it. You want to protect the players. I get it's a COVID era. I, I get it's we're not back to normal. I think a lot of this is going to change with the new CBA, and I think next spring is going to be very stressful. My yep. gut says we're not going to have baseball in 2022. That's just my gut. I hope I'm wrong, but that that's kind of where we're leaning towards. They had um, a hard time last time, so I don't expect it to be any different. There's going to be a lot of changes coming up, so so you know, be locked in for that. Um, uh, obviously, it's still baseball. We still love it. We're still sitting here talking about it for the past 45 minutes. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I, look. As long as, as long as my Phillies can make the playoffs this year, I'll be happy. I don't care how it happens. It hasn't happened since 2012. Okay, so it's uh, I'm I'm on it. I'm sitting on a decade here. So can we make the playoffs, please? That was 2012, a decade ago. Oh, make me feel old. We're both old, Taylor. I'm 26. You're what? 27. 25. I turned 26. 25. I'm older than you. Shit. You are. Oh man. oh man. <laughs> <laughs> that backfired on me. I thought, why did I think you were older than me? I don't know. Because I act older, I'm more mature. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, uh, on that note, this has been the inaugural episode of Sports with a Z and a T. We're obviously gonna work out the kinks. I know our Wi-Fi was kind of cutting out there for a while. It was tough to you know, piece that together, but we'll work it out. We'll work out with some of the graphics and, you know, this product's just going to get better each and every week. Um, but this was more of an introduction to what's going to be this really fun ride with Godzilla media. Again, we were brought to you by saving face barbershop up in Saratoga Springs. Go check out my boy, Jeremiah. He, he's up there. He, he always has open slots. He, and, you know, even if you don't see uh, an appointment on the website on savingface.com, 
he is always willing to work with you to try to get you in. So, so give them a call. Um, other than that, this was fun. We'll talk about the NFL schedule, which comes out tonight. We didn't get to that, but that comes out tonight. Obviously, we're airing on Wednesday, even though we're recording on Tuesday. So I say tonight. We'll talk about the NFL schedule coming out. We'll do some NBA basketball breakdown with the playoffs coming up. And then obviously anything else that happens in the world of baseball, the hockey playoffs are coming around. I know I'm just going to bore Taylor to death with that, but guess what? We're going to talk. I'm not a big hockey guy. We're going to talk about it, Taylor. (laughs) Yeah, you'll listen. But it's just going to be fun to talk sports, and I'm glad you all tuned in. For Taylor, I'm Bryce. We will see you next week on Sports with a Z and T. Bye, everyone.